Welcome, everyone. My name is Tony Cockermo, president of Civil CAD Learning Solutions. And today, our guest, Eric, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Eric DeLeon. I am the CAD BIM Technology Manager at Half Associates, based out of Richardson. And I'm also the host of the podcast, CAD Managers Confessions Podcast. Yeah. So how long has that uh, podcast been going on? Um, since November 2019. Right. So um, I've been listening to podcasts for a very long time. Yeah. And it was just one of those long passion projects yep. and then finally to be honest so uh, one of my guys from top con solution stores um was saying hey is asking me some questions like hey what yeah. do you do for your podcast i'm like uh i haven't started it yet <laughs> and then he's like well we're working on it right now so literally yeah. um i literally that like that week i that's cool uh, yeah that's cool i've listened to several pressure. sessions yeah i've recognized most of those cad managers you've interviewed yeah, yeah. Right. um yeah that's really cool um so what has it been like, you know, going, doing these podcasts? Has it been a challenge or has it been really fun? Uh, Both. Or has it worked? <laughs> it's a lot of work. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's been amazing because one of my biggest things is the reason why I started it yeah. is that where do CAD managers go to learn CAD managers? Yeah. They yeah. don't learn this in school. They don't teach us in college. Yep. Um, you know, your work barely gives you experience to go do that. And even or if they you don't did, have time for it. You don't have time. But even if they did, there's nothing really out there. Yeah. So the whole goal was, one, is to share my experiences with people. Yep. And then to also is to share the stories of others. Yep. Um, and so, you know, it is a lot of work. You know, I try to – I haven't done one in a while because of my move uh, yep. from Oregon to Texas. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot of work. But, you know, yep. automated some stuff back end of, you cool. know, sign up here, do this. Yeah. So, I try to leverage a lot of that stuff, have them fill yeah. out a pre-application. But yeah, I mean, most of, you know, I even got the OG, you know, Robert Green on there. Yep. And, <laughs> and I got a lot of the expert elites that are now um, a part of, you know, the Autodesk program. So yeah, what one of the big things that um, has made it fun was that no CAD manager's journey is the same. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. and so it's cool to see the different stories. You know, one of the, that's one of my questions, what's your origin story? Yeah. And so... <laughs> <clears throat> it's interesting to, just to hear the different flavors. Yeah. But at the same time, though, um, yeah, I mean, we walk in similar shoes, but because of the different industries, yep. the different cultures, um, it makes it definitely um, different spinoff to kind of learn in yeah. different ways. Yeah, I've noticed that with cab managers. There's <clears throat> what I've noticed is that there's two different, the two groups of cab managers. You got the technical specialists that don't do design. You there to handle tech support, some training, and then you got the cab managers there. They're doing that, but they're also designing. They're full-blown yeah. design guys. They were the power managers then. They got promoted Correct. power users to a CAD manager role, Correct. but they're still designing Correct. and stuff. So <laughs> that's kind of the two different breeds I've seen with CAD yeah. managers. Um, but you know, I'm more of the you know kind of the the the, the power user that got converted into a CAD manager and slash IT guy. Um, and so, uh, and I'm still doing design for companies and engineering and stuff. So. Yeah. Uh, I think the fun part about it, you know, as a kind of remote CAD manager, I'm, I'm a private consultant, but I do CAD manage for other firms, is um, the different industries. Like some of my clients are oil and gas, some are more municipalities, some are engineering companies, some are con contractors, you know, some of, um, are college students. So I get a variety of, of different clients and it's kind of fun, you know, managing them and learning some things from how they're doing stuff internally. Um, so what has the been, have you noticed any differences when you move from Oregon to Texas within companies, any kind of differences? Oh, well, obviously I've only been to one different company. Yeah. Uh, but um, yes and no. Yeah. I mean, I would like to, and I, again, I don't know, I, I don't know all that yeah. because I've only been really exposed to my, my main company I'm at now. Yeah. But definitely, um, obviously we all have some similar challenges. Yeah. At the end of the day, we're still using CAD programs. We still fight for, um, you know, we still fight for work sharing efficiencies. We're still fighting for ways to, um, you know, train our teams, have the standards yep. set up. Yep. So the struggles are all still the, the same. same. Yeah. You know, but for like where I'm at now, the big challenge is now because I'm a change agent. Yeah. So the birth of my position at this company yeah. was, you know, we need, we want unified CAN standards yeah. and we want to make sure that work sharing is efficient yeah. and streamlined, things like that. Get everybody on the same page. We want the plans to look the same. Yeah. We want consistent. We, all the same things yeah, we, yeah. we've been hearing over and over. For years, <laughs> decades. <laughs> you know, decades. But, you know, but what, makes it a, what makes it fun and challenging yeah. at the same time, though, is like 
where I'm at, everybody. So we were one business line. Yeah. So all the so there's one profit center. That's every everybody works the same profit center. Yeah. So it's not like our Tyler office is competing with Houston. Houston's competing yeah. with Richardson and Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas. We don't got to do do yeah. any of that, right? But um, but what the one of the challenges is that everybody's broken up by team. Yeah. And teams within the practices. Yeah. So each technical practice could have multiple teams. Yeah. And so of course. If you have that kind of fragmentation, yep. everybody can do what they kind of want to do. Yeah. And so it's just, and you know, some groups have cat technicians, some groups don't. Yep. So we have a lot of, and you know, the downfall of the market crash of 2008, 2009 yep. ran all the cat professionals out the door yeah. because all the engineers, and they're smart. I'll take nothing away from you guys, engineers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, they just weren't trained in the drafting. You know, drafting best practices. Yeah. You know, they're not CAD professionals. So yeah, yeah. So for them, one of the big things that I hear from engineers, and you probably heard it, yeah. and you may have even said it, <laughs> is you know, when you're when you're behind the ball on your on your project yeah. and you're trying to get things out the door, when it comes to the plans, you know, I'll never if I hear it, I will slap a CAD professional who says it, but engineers will always say it's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I mean, yep. some stuff may not look correct, yep. not the way you want to, but I'm out of time. So it's yep. good enough. I got to get submittal in or <laughs> yeah. it's going to be another 30 days or a week before I can yeah. submit it again. I mean, that yeah. struggle is real. And yeah. so it's just trying to balance all that out. But but really, I mean, you know, you you have it where um, for us, it's still I call it the hybrid environment. Yeah. Where even though we do have cat professionals. Yeah. Have, I think in the whole firm, you know, we have we're like 1300 people mm -hmm. across like 14 offices across the south. Yeah. And um but uh, yeah, I mean, we have some we have a good pool of um, cat professionals. But at the same time, though, the EITs yeah. and engineers who draft out definitely yeah. um, were outsized when it comes to that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, but it's just trying to get the frameworks in place, yeah. the best practices established, and everybody on the same page. Yeah. I've seen different companies. You know, I, I mean, I get a lot of clients, so I've seen companies where. There's more drafters and designers yep. than engineers because they have like five drafters and then one engineer overseeing those drafters. And I've seen some companies that they don't hire drafters, designers. Yep. It's all EITs and engineers. Yep. And then you got some companies that are evenly split. You yeah. know? Correct. So, um, but uh, yeah, it's 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 interesting. I think every company should have some drafters. You know, I don't think I it should. I mean, there are companies. I'm sorry if you're listening, but they are really don't want any drafters and designers and yeah. they, they're, you know, they look down on them. I, I really should, they, I wish I didn't do that. <laughs> no, so. I mean, and, and, well, and that's a challenge. Yeah. That's the, again, the, not yeah. taking away from yeah. smart people, yeah. but, oh, well, I'm an engineer, I'm a professional. So yeah. I should, I could, I can do that. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but you're, I'm sorry. If you're good, you're good. But the ones who, your plans don't look good. Yeah. And usually when I go and interview at a new place, yeah. Yeah, well, that's one of the first questions I'll ask the company. They'll ask me all my questions. Yeah. And I'll ask them, can I ask you a question? I'm yeah. like, okay. Um, how do you feel the quality of your plans are in your, in your yeah. company? Yeah. And so a couple of things. One is they're like, oh my gosh, we, we could do yeah. Yeah, so much room for improvement. Yeah. Well, I can usually tell that you probably have EITs and engineers doing the drafting. Yeah. Because yeah. again, it's the good enough mentality. The good enough mentality. Yeah. I mean, you can still have that with having a pool of CAD drafters and technicians. Yeah. But I like to say that I would like to say that some of those issues you have other issues, yep. but the quality of your plans for the most part yep. are usually a little bit are usually better. I would like to say. Yeah, I I've seen you know twenty five years. Everybody's plan looks different. You know the line weights, the fonts, how they look. Mm -hmm. I've seen some really messy ones where everybody's font was the same thickness, everything existing yeah. and proposed. I'm like, yeah. but you couldn't tell the difference yeah, of what was correct, what. Correct. You know, so it was very difficult to understand what was going on up to the plans. So when you saw that, what kind of environment were they working? Was it a lot of, was it It still? had to be a smaller company. I think it was a oh. smaller company that's, that I would see something like that, where they're trying to get the stuff out the door. Gotcha. They're smaller that's, firms. That's good enough. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's get it out. So, and typically they don't have a CAD manager, you know. Yeah. So uh, what I'm seeing as a property consultant is companies that don't have CAD managers, don't have templates set in place, then the the plans don't look as good, you yeah. know, because, you know, some companies have QA, QC teams. They have two. Mm -hmm. One is the, um, you know, CAD manager and somebody else are doing the plans, how that looks, does it meet the company standards? Mm -hmm. And then they, you got another QAC team that's the engineer yep. who's reviewing, make sure, hey, yep. they're looking at just, does it work? Everything works, yeah. meets the code and stuff like that. So I have seen companies that have um, two QAs. I think 
Jacobs has two teams. One of my friends yeah. works at Jacobs, used to work at Jacobs. And I think they have two, two people and stuff like that that review the plans and stuff. So, but uh, the method to do it, you know, is a little old school to me, the way they were telling me, yeah. <laughs> highlighting everything. Yeah, well, <laughs> so, well, there's something to that. So yeah. at a company that I was at, um, we, so we had a, obviously the internal team that yep. does a QC. And then what they did, they reverse engineered, here's a submittal. They said, by the submittal, we go, we come back mm -hmm. four weeks. Yeah. That's when the QA review starts. Yeah. But then you have to have a QC once you get yeah. back up another four weeks. Yeah. So it's eight weeks left for just checking. Some yeah. people. Eight weeks. Wow. <clears throat> but, but because of, and this is why, yeah. because the QA team was comprised of the uh, president of the company yeah. did it for design. The vice president did it for constructability hmm. and I did it for yeah. CAD standards yeah. and drafting and composition yeah. quality. Right. And so, um, which was really nice. So what we did was, and it, and I got a good compliment, I, even though I left the firm, yeah. um, one of my drafters that I, designers that I stole, yeah. she actually ended up going back. Yeah. Um, and she said, one of the people said, well, one, they were happy to see her. Yeah. And they said, oh my gosh, the plans haven't looked, have yeah. not looked the same since Eric left. <laughs> there um, we go. And so, so we did that. And so, but what I, what I did was in that point was then I, we stepped back yeah. and I actually institutionalized. So my drafters actually had a two-step prong where, you know, if I'm a, if I'm the one doing the red lines or the mm -hmm. corrections, I have a senior drafter or technician check. Yeah. And then that goes to then the, the yeah. engineer for checking. Then again, it, it eventually moves on to the QA, mm -hmm. but because of those just extra steps in yeah. the process, we definitely were able to uh, uh, get the quality yeah. to, and everybody was happy. I mean, the, even the, because the good. point where the vice, the vice president, if he got into it and saw that, you know, they were pretty, they're pretty, everybody's pretty witty, right? Pretty, yeah. Pretty smart and everything like that, right? And so if they saw like, hey, the fonts don't match from this sheet to this sheet, yeah, he'll toss the, the he'll toss it back yeah. and say, you guys got to fix this. Yeah, I, exactly. I do not want to be distracted by by this and so petty yeah so when i started there i mean it took some time but eventually a lot of that went away and yeah. we got stuff they're like okay we can actually focus on on yeah. the design can yeah. focus on constructability because it, the plans actually look really yeah. good yeah exactly. and consistent they're not distracted so we've got some other members that join us so chris um you work at caltran right so do y'all have i think your mic do y'all have a qa qc team on y'all's departments that reviews plans and stuff like that um, I'm not part of that group that handles that stuff. Yeah, but do you know if they so, Yeah, they should have a plan that, yeah. that does that. Um, I've never worked on a Caltrans project directly. Okay. Okay. So I don't uh, know what that process is. Okay. Do, do they have any kind of mechanisms to check, double check standards and stuff internally on, on plans? Like, hey, does this meet the Caltrans standards? Just the XML files. Okay. With the little warning symbols on the alignments. Um, I'm not sure if we have a formal thing for the microstation yeah. plants that goes through and checks all the levels. Uh, okay. I'm not on that group. I know some co uh, companies do that. They yeah, have CAD, go, CAD conform. CAD yeah. conform is a really good tool. For yeah, that. they they go and check all the fonts and layers and yep. you know stuff like that. So there's some companies that do that. So, um, but uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. Um, yeah. So, so what has it been experience been like moving from Oregon to Texas so far? <laughs> uh so far so so far yeah. great to be honest i mean yeah it's hot yeah it's hot but you know as you know we didn't take the decision lightly yeah um and so for me i just got to the point where you know it's life's too short to work at work at bad jobs yeah, yeah. actually actually to work for bad managers yeah right and i was at a point where i was like two years in at a new place and the, i reported originally reported the cio and then the coo mm -hmm. and we actually had a pretty good work relationship we uh, we had, were yeah. on the same wavelength but it just was just things were just weren't going yeah. as well and i just like you know i just yep. you know do i be a good what do you want to say a good resume guy and just yep. stay here for five years and not to be a jumper yeah right? so people true. see red flags but jumpers yeah <clears throat> but then you know just this opportunity for to come to texas i worked yeah. with the guy that's an operational manager here at half yeah um and we worked together at Lochner back in the day yeah we were part of a small group, and so we've kept in touch over the years. Yeah. You know, we're, that's cool. We're friends on Instagram and LinkedIn, and I'll say, hey, you know, does just, it um, just talk about you know how's it going and stuff like that? Oregon. Does Rick Ellis live in Oregon? Yeah, Rick. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, Rick was a part of. Yeah, he's a part of my podcast. He just yeah. lived about forty-five minutes away, and yeah. he was trying to be the first uh, 
in studio guest, <laughs> and then the pandemic hit, and then I moved. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's funny. so Rick, if you ever listen to this, <laughs> sorry, man. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's that's funny. Uh, yeah, I've known Rick uh, quite a while now, and then I've done. I was kind of an assistant for his lab to AU for oh, yeah. multiple years, and so he's a great guy. I love, love Rick. He, yeah. he's, he's a funny guy. So. Um, but, but overall, though, I mean, just coming to Texas, yeah. um, you know, obviously Oregon isn't all gloom and doom. Yeah. You know, we have, we, I call it God's country because it's a beautiful land. Yeah. I Man, it's beautiful. But, um, you know, being here, my, the vitamin D, yeah. I feel better. Um, obviously, working at a place that values you, yeah. values what you bring to the table. Yeah. I don't have people above me. You know, there's a Steve, there's a Steve Jobs quote I love, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, we don't hire people to tell them what to do. Yeah. We hire them for them to tell us what to do. Yeah. Because they're, they, they're hiring you for your expertise. Yeah. So let us do our thing. Yeah. Right? The very thing that you hi that hire us for. And so anyway, so <clears throat> speaking of that, I mean, I know companies that hire CAD managers, but they don't listen to the CAD managers yeah. at all, at all. They're just there to take support. They don't listen to yeah. like, hey, we should change this and change that. And there's companies that do that. They just don't listen to the CAD manager. Yeah. And the CAD manager has zero say so or power in the company. Yeah. I don't, you know, I'm like, man. Um, so I know a couple of people that are members that, that really have no power. No yeah. say so anything. <laughs> yeah. And this is hard for me because yeah. I've, I've up until this time, I've been a production CAD manager. Yeah. So managing teams doing my own red lines and yeah. doing deliverables doing scopes yeah. so i'm purely behind the scenes yeah you know i'm trying to work with team i mean i'm working yeah. with the teams uh, you know what can i what can we do to make sure you have the tools you need to get yeah. the job done yeah. and making sure the templates work making sure we have good workflows yeah. file naming everything's consistent file naming convention yeah. look and feel um looking at the new technologies coming down the road but anyway so um it's interesting i i get I consider myself an internal consultant yeah. because project teams will ask me, hey, we're doing project overruns. We're having a problem with our CAD folks or managing CAD or CAD deliverables. And yeah, so, yeah. so it's kind of nice to get into those conversations yeah. with people. Um, and so so I get a part of it, but it's just I'm just a, a, a yep. one man band. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's interesting. I'm like, I have a lot of uh, flexibility to do what I need to do. And uh, company owners will notice that when when they look at the billing and, and the hours put in the project and say, Hey, why is this team spending, you know, just two months on the same project? Well, yep. the, the other one in the other office is spending twice as long. What's going on. Correct. And that's when you got to bring the cab manager, see what's going on with yeah. you know, one engineer and yeah. make sure it's not, is it engineering training they need or is it software training that they need? Yeah. You know? So, um, and sometimes it's both, you know, one yeah. of the teams could be lacking engineering experience and software experience and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, we're wow. feeling that right now with the transition. We waited, I think the industry waited too long with the with the transition to open roads designer. Mm. And so now hearing text text dot is like, you know, yeah, we're doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, a lot of people have, you know, yeah. we could we could have been better prepared. And so so we're just trying to go get our game plan. What's what's it going to be like to and I'm sure get if you heard of those, there's a lot of companies here in Texas that they do all their design and civil and just push it to yeah, yeah that's i don't like that yeah i know that. so that's, that's one of cat that's cat 101 a lot of companies do that and yeah, like they can design it faster and civil and edit it faster and then push it to, to micro yeah. station just to do some labeling and plant production and like yeah I'm like, this is silly and my personal goal is to convert textile to, to civil <laughs> that's my personal yeah, yeah. goal i know a lot of companies out there that love bentley and and info roads oh and and, and uh, open roads and in roads and yeah. the geopack yeah. surveying yeah. and all that stuff but my personal goal is to convert. <laughs> yeah, all I this mean, is already tried once. They failed. Yeah, you know? correct. So, because yeah. look, we're we're behind. Was it California, Florida, Ohio? Is it Wisconsin? Wisconsin. Yeah. I think there's five states. Like guys, we're tech. We can't be falling behind these other states. Uh, and so, uh, um, and pick one or the other. But I'd love to see. You know, we just have thousands of projects. You know, I think California and Texas is one of the biggest states in the transportation projects yeah. and stuff. So, um, but. Uh, it, sometimes it bothers me when I see somebody win a project and it takes them a year to do. I'm like, what? Yeah. It took a year to do five miles? And I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> well, but then you have to go through the bureaucracy of gov oh. government. Right? Oh, Because yeah. I work for the Oregon Department of Transportation. Yeah. And so we used to, uh, be, so they do direct points for any, any small project yeah. under $100,000. So me working at, at Oregon DOT for a few years and then doing consultant work, you know, yeah. a lot of people I worked with, eventually went back to the to the dot yeah and so so a lot of stuff reputation goes a long ways yeah so we got some direct points i was at the right firm at the right time and we got some direct points and it was just like that's like wow because you know for myself my background is like um 
I'm a bridge structural structural engineering technician yeah, doing, yeah. doing bridge prep doing yeah. bridge plans yep. and so that's like my sweet spot so they uh so we do these bridge projects we're like okay I'd, I'd work with the dot's engineer and i'd be basically their technician yeah um and stuff like that and it's like okay this would take us a year to do literally do like if you and i were to sit down we can get this done like in a month in a month yeah yeah <laughs> you know how it is you got to do the you know the tsnl the type size and location then you got to do the 30 percent and 60%, it's funny because you look at these tech stop plans i don't know about california like in caltrans but half of the sh you know half of the set is details yeah. <laughs> i'm like what the heck standard details yeah i mean i i got one set here but i'm doing i was doing a project and we we're connecting and they gave me the set it was 350 pages and 180 were construction details yeah i'm like what <laughs> so um sometimes it's just for records to make sure yeah. that you when you get sued down the line you have the correct set yeah so you don't have to go back into some database and grab to see you know what, what i find it funny is when, this, yeah. when the when the, when the the dot redlines their own details i'm like oh can yeah. you redline and they just redline all their detail like what <laughs> i'm like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm redlining your own stuff it happens here they'll they'll comment on their own details like yeah. what <laughs> can you change this real quick <laughs> so, can you reword this detail and can you change this and make that a four four a number four bar with 18 inch spacing like yeah Okay, you don't have a detail for this. Why am I redlining your own personal stuff that you provide to us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but uh, yeah, but this but this uh, transition has definitely been a ride. I mean, the kids are finally all, you know we yeah. just finally got our one year anniversary yeah. here in Texas. Um, so the kids are all settling in, and you know, um, yeah, we finally got a house, moved into a house. Even though the yeah. market it's kind of maybe not ideal to buy a house, yeah. but the rent here is crazy, so it was better to is it the same price or higher? Well, yeah. So yeah, so our our mortgage is like 200 bucks more than our rent. Yeah. Than our rent was. And and then six months when you like- you But it's a six, space amount, space grant, square foot. Oh no, it's, oh, it's way bigger. It's, it's bigger, but, yeah. but still, But still though, I mean, yeah. in, at the next, yeah. at the end of the next lease, yeah. who knows the state of the market, yeah. it could go up 500 more dollars. Yeah. Or, you know, it's not gonna go down. Right? Yeah. Nobody's gonna say, oh, you know what, you're over yeah, yeah. I should have so. bought, I was ready to go in 2019 before COVID. I oh, you should have. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm kicking myself in the butt right now for not doing it. And I should have did it because I, I would have gone through a VA loan. I don't have to put nothing down for a VA yeah. loan. And so, and now the same house I'm looking at is $250,000 extra now. Yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah, this in the market. I know this is, this is quite, you know, <laughs> yeah, cat yeah. stuff, but <laughs> but they did say, you know, that's one, thing that, that's one thing that you don't know about, right? As you're doing stuff, you don't like, could the market stabilize? Yeah. Could it go down? All I know is Texas is a hot spot. People are coming in by the droves. I don't see yeah. anything. Mm. I can still, we I can see stuff, yeah. you know, stabilizing where you're not paying a hundred, hundred grand over yeah. asking. But I still think we're still a booming. It's a booming economy. People man. from other states will still move here because it's still cheaper than California, New York, yeah. Wisconsin, Michigan. Yeah, areas. Driver, I mean, yeah. should be a lot of I opportunity think, for us. I think apartments will go down here. there. I think that's the first one yeah. will go down because apartments just get too expensive. Yeah. My apartment was like fifteen hundred fifty for two two bedrooms, twelve hundred square foot. It shot up to nineteen hundred now. Yeah. But the brand new ones across the street is twenty five hundred. <laughs> brand yeah, new square same, yeah. same square footage, you know, and yeah. stuff. So, but uh, um, but yeah. Um, but um, so overall, I'm happy to be here. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm a Texan now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just looking forward to you know since I've been here, you know, I think Jason Schmidt's on. Uh, him and I have connected and. Um, you know, some other just local cat yeah. folks. Um, we have a know. lot of cat guys, and managers, and expert leads yeah, that live in yeah, Texas. Correct, correct. So, yeah, so it's just crazy. Just the um, the community. Todd and Tommy. Yeah, and, my boy Todd. Yeah, and Frank is just up, just two two hours away up in Oklahoma. Yeah, so, yeah, right. correct. Yeah, it's Maybe crazy. So uh, yeah, we're just right. waiting for Chris to move here. You know. <laughs> I think he's pretty happy where he's at. He's on the beach over there. <laughs> yeah, it's a little too hot. <laughs> it's a little too hot. 77 degrees. Yeah, we had a cool breeze come in. It was 102 today. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yesterday, I think it got 99. Uh, I think yeah. I posted somewhere. Like, hey, we had a cool front come in at 99 degrees. <laughs> so on the way, so real quick, on the way to the store, it was it was yeah. 7 o'clock at night. The sun's kind of going down. I looked at my, my Apple Watch. It's 99 degrees, and my daughter was like, Man, it just feels really cool right now. <laughs> go, it's 99 degrees, though, but the fact that it wasn't the sun wasn't on you and you know a little bit of breeze, you're like, wow, this is good. We'll get used to this 100 <laughs> degrees by when it gets out 80, we're busting out the sweats and the hoodies. <laughs> yeah, that's what my kids love. They we'll love bust the, out hoodies. the hoodies and sweats. <laughs> but uh yeah. Um but um are you are you getting ready to go at you? Yeah, 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 gonna go to AU. I'm excited. Just got got that all booked up. Yeah. And, Hey, Jason. Uh, what's up, man? 
I'll call you tomorrow morning. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, a, you know, so this is crazy. I've been a CAD professional for 24 years. And this uh, 2019 was actually my first year to ever go to AU because throughout the years, you know, being a production CAD manager, you know, you know I, I don't have time. And then, yeah. then so being a regular production CAD, CAD manager, yeah. you got no time. And then for like five years, I was the, I was the production CAD manager for all of our design build projects. Yeah. And so I was either gone away. I was yep. living out of a hotel somewhere. <laughs> and so I definitely wasn't going to go. Um, but uh, no, I mean, it's so, yeah, so I'm excited. I mean, just to yeah. get the, you know, eventually I would love to present something. Yeah. But really, I'm just getting, I'm just learning to lay the land. It's, so yeah. it's going to be my second one. The other ones, sorry, Autodesk, but the virtual ones just quite, weren't oh, quite yeah. not the same. Yeah. <clears throat> I know you did what you did, but, you know, you still learn some good stuff. Yeah. But, you know, one of the things that people said, it's really not, a, I mean, Obviously, the classes are important. It's yeah. awesome to see the keynotes, but really, it's establishing the in-person relationships. Yeah. You know, a lot of people that I didn't know before mm -hmm. um, putting, out, putting out yeah, a face of people you talk online. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember for years, Autodesk. You know, they had the, what I don't know if they still have it, the Gunslinger, and it was <laughs> private invite only. They would invite, I think, it was what twelve to fifteen people tops. And Chris, did you ever go to one of those, Jason? Uh, the Gunslingers. Yeah, it's inside the factory now. Yeah, inside the factory. And they tried for like six years to get me. And I was a CAD member, but I actually managed my own project. So I never had a chance. I told yeah. them to just give up. There's just no chance for me to take yeah. off for a whole week or, or four days to go yeah. up there. You know, when I'm managing my own project, they, can, yeah. they don't have enough manpower to let somebody take over. Yeah. So they gave up on that. And I heard that was kind of fun going to those things. I um, think that's what all the other consultants were saying. You know, um, we had, you know, Frank Mayfield said that too. So it, you know, I'm not working. I'm by myself. So I'm a personal one. So yeah. what's the, you know, he's been there, done it. He's done yeah, it for like a yeah. hundred. He's been there for like a hundred years. Yeah, yeah. And so he's like, you know, it's when, just, you, when you've done not, it so many times now, it's not, like, yeah, yeah, it's not quite the not same. Really not the same. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, anyway, so, but yeah, it's, it's, it was, it was a challenge. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, so Jason, what's new at your end? What's going on in your industry? Well, I'm, uh, I've moved over to uh, NetApp, so mm -hmm. I'm kind of out of the, uh, specifically out of the AEC industry. I um, yeah. still have some AEC clients yep. in what I'm doing, and, and I am working with some um, large AEC clients, mm -hmm. and, uh, but my days are all about data management and virtualization right now, so yeah. <laughs> I've kind of moved um, off that way. Um, I'm still doing some things on the side for a yep. few different people that I know and keeping my hands in the, in the, um, you know, the futures and the different things like that and yeah. um, doing some beta stuff and all that kind of stuff. So, yep. and I'm still doing a little bit of, I've actually been teaching my son um, how to use civil 3d, which has been a, a fun challenge yeah. getting him going. He's a, uh, doing uh, engineering school right now so oh that's cool that's good I, that's all so what software are you currently i guess you know working with the most right now in your you know, profession then my day job yeah yeah um so i'm i'm with netapp so it's very uh it's their platform you know they're they're very much for their platform now i am working in a group that is part of their cloud services. So there's other things that are part of that cloud services division that are um, vendor agnostic, if you will. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they have some uh, different tools um, for like compliance, which is real big right now. So mm -hmm. uh, understanding where data is and understanding if it's compliant and meeting, mm -hmm. you know, different HIPAA and GB GDPR, all those different rules yeah. and stuff. So um, that's, kind of the main part. Um, I am also doing, uh, working with uh, collaboration piece. So mm -hmm. being able to have a single set of data and move it out to the edge. Yeah. Um, and it's it's NetApp's version of that. You know, there's there's quite a few different vendors out there that do it. And that's what I'm, I'm working with the NetApp version of that now, so. Cool, cool. I've been noticing you've been working from home now. Is that permanent or that temporary? Uh, permanent. I've been at home now for since uh, 
Uh, let's see. I left uh, Big Red Dog in December mm-hmm. uh, of of 2019, mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, started with Applied Software in I guess it was March. So, mm-hmm. but but just before the pandemic, and that yeah. was a a remote. That was a full time remote job anyway. Oh, yeah, I noticed so, a lot of these resellers are all remote now. <laughs> yeah. They just got out of the offices and stuff, and I don't know where they're doing all their equipment. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah I mean everybody's there's. If you're not a, uh, I won't. I won't. I have. I have some very opinions on it, but <laughs> but uh, you know, if you're most most organizations, I mean, if you're doing something where you're not in a team specifically, yeah. there's there's not a reason. I mean, remote works great. Yeah. Um, I do think there are some very specific things, though, that y- it's just lost. You can't do it. I mean, even in this environment yeah. like this, where we're being interactive, there's just something that's not lost. The same, yeah, it's not the same. It's not yeah. the same as if you're sitting there with, you know, three or four other people or you're overhearing conversations yeah. or you're over, you know, you're walking by someone and you see something. So I, I think there's a, you know, a balance. But yeah. um, I'm fortunate. Yes, I get to work remote. So <laughs> I'm I and and I work with clients um, U.S., Europe, uh, Australia, New Zealand. So yeah. I vary across the <laughs> <laughs> across the time zones. That's, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I didn't um, didn't apply technology get acquired by. Great Tech, Great Tech, yeah, yeah. Great Tech yeah. out of so, I believe they're really big overseas, of. and they they made their you know foot stomp what 2017 or something when they came over and started the stop. they bought yeah, out they, Total Cat or something so, uh, yeah the one in there. Houston yeah yeah and then they grew and now you know they're they're really trying to compete I guess with with Imagine it you know so yeah global they they're global I yeah. mean they they really are and and with having a foothold now. But um, they're slowly, they're all disappearing. Think about it. It's going to be eventually four, and that's it. <laughs> you know, so, four big ones. Yeah. So I think every two years or every year, probably every two years, I see somebody get acquired. You know? Yeah. So Well, there's been quite a few. Um, I mean, just even when I started at Applied, there's been two or three, uh, you know, from 2020 to 2022 yep. that have been acquired. Yeah, during COVID, um, I think two, two of them got acquired. Yep. So, um, yeah. Um. Yeah, they're they're and they're slowly downsizing too. I don't think they're growing. I think they're downsizing. Have you seen that same thing? I, I think it depends on what in what field they're in. What field like, department, yeah. In, yeah, the like I've seen no growth, unfortunately, on the civil side. <laughs> we're we're like the it's just it's well, they're like fighting an, it's an for civil guys. I know that for a fact because they're <clears> losing <throat> to the engineering companies. They're getting their best yeah. groups are now getting hired by engineering companies. And yep. stuff. So yeah, um, um, the MEP stuff seems to be the that and and prefab and the construction stuff is really yep. growing. So I think there's there's that's expanding. Yep. The MEP stuff, um, even the architectural stuff. I mean the you know the pure Revit stuff and yep. the, all of that. I think that that area is growing um but yeah i so it's it's probably a balance i mean it's yep. probably they've lost some and grown some and yeah right. yeah chris so last time i was there in california i was doing training for caltran and i was say at the hotel they were doing the bullet train is that still going on in california yeah that'll be going on for the next 10 to 15 years. Have they started or still trying to get like right away and, you know, you know. Uh, they're still working. I believe the last environmental permit the is going to be released pretty soon. Yeah. In the Bay Area, I think it's the last segment. I think they've got everything else permitted mm-hmm. from L.A. or Anaheim to San Francisco. Um, but right now they just have the money and commitment to go from Bakersfield to Merced. I believe, or Madera. Yeah. Um, so it's just going in the, the Central Valley of California. Yeah. And it's not making it to LA or San Francisco. Hmm. Okay. Um, so the, mid, the Central Valley of California is somewhat populated, but it's not populated enough to support high speed train. So how would this affect the Amtrak or is it replacing Amtrak? Um, from, so right now, Amtrak goes from Bakersfield to Sacramento, mm-hmm. and then on to the Bay Area. 
Um, but the Amtrak will make more stops than the high speed rail is. So they'll still work together. Okay. Um, but it'll siphon off anyone who's going from Bakersfield all the way to the Bay Area or Sacramento. I think they, yeah, they're still working on some of the right of way here. They're actually doing intimate domains now because some of the landowners won't give it up oh, yeah. <laughs> and they're having to come yeah. take it from them. So, but I think it's going to be a game changer once that gets going from Dallas to Houston, but then the other one going from Dallas to Austin and then the third yeah. one from Austin to Houston, create that triangle. Um, but uh, yeah, it's going to be, but Texas is, huh? Texas is relatively flat. Yeah. So it's a lot easier. <laughs> um, I think the segment, the segment from Bakersfield to LA is the most expensive segment. Yeah. Um, and the last estimate that I saw, that's going to be like $30 billion. Yeah. It was like two times bigger than wow, Texas. You can either buy Twitter or you can build the high speed. <laughs> yeah. <that's right>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. But so I, it'll get done. It just depends on what decade. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe in our lifetime. <laughs> what if they'll toll it? Are they do like those private public partnerships? Those P threes, right? Where the, where the you know Europeans come in, they they own it, and then they just lease it. You know, oh, they right. get their money yeah. to the polls, and then yeah. they oh, hand yes. it back over to the the state whenever they're done. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So California is going to use that model. So right now they're using design build from Bakersfield <clears throat> uh, to to the Bay Area. That's all design build. And then I believe the last I heard, the segment from Bakersfield to LA, that thirty billion dollars was they're going to give it to that private park. The PPP, yep. and then they would build it and then operate the system for like ninety years. Yeah. And then that way you can creatively cut down your your published government cost for the the mm -hmm. high speed rail by like thirty billion dollars. So you can hide that from the public and say, oh, it's only costing <laughs> ninety billion when it's actually costing one hundred twenty billion. Oh man! Because you're able to offload that cost yeah. onto the operating costs. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, that's that's crazy. I I, I'm, I was thinking here, like you know, we have Southwest. And I, th I think seventy bucks you can buy to Houston, you yeah. know. And but how's that gonna, you know, when the track gets, you know, comes into play, is there gonna be a price war going on? Because I don't know what the I'm, the track's well, gonna uh, cost. Well, I also think if you're like, because right, like right, okay, so when back in Oregon, yeah, from Salem to Capital City, so mid Willamette Valley to Portland, I took the commuter Amtrak, mm -hmm. and so it was really easy to get off and on yeah. versus. I didn't have to go through all the security stuff that an airplane would go through. Yeah. So if I was able to do that and get on a freaking bullet yeah. to get me somewhere, I mean, I would, I would opt for that. I'm, I'm sure mean, Southwest is like, crap, we might lose a lot of people, you know, that maybe. flying from yeah. Dallas to Austin, Dallas to Houston, um, you know, 70 bucks is well, pretty cheap. You have to look at what business Southwest is in. Yeah. Right there in the leisure market and a little bit of business. Yeah. And the high speed rail is built to, to service rich business people. Yeah. It's not built to service the common man. Yeah. Right. Because if I'm a, a family of four and I can drive to San Francisco for a hundred bucks or 200 bucks in gas yeah, or $800 for everyone to have a ticket on the high speed rail, <laughs> I'm driving if I'm cost conscious because yeah. yeah. I they can't afford that. haven't made an announcement what the price is going to be for that Amtrak. <clears throat> yeah. I haven't seen it yet. Maybe I could be wrong of what that's yeah. going to be. I, I feel like it would be more like the Florida. I mean, Florida within the next couple of next year and a half, you're going to be able to go from Miami to Orlando yeah. in, you know, a very short period of time. And I mean, I know the last time I was there, those prices weren't, I mean, they weren't hundreds of dollars. So, right. I, but it's a different, right. Florida's uh, high speed light. Yeah. Right. They're going 110. Yeah. Where California's goal is 200. Okay. And going from 110 to 200 dollars is a multiple in costs. Yeah. In energy, right? They're using diesel in Florida. High speed rail is going to be using electricity. Um, and they had like these pop ups for propaganda for the high speed rail, where you can go in and like see information about it. Mm -hmm. And I picked up one of the reports, and it's going to take six additional power plants oh to generate God. the power required for the high speed rail, oh. or equivalent. We're gonna go right, so you can build six power plants or the equivalent in acreage of wow. that solar. And this is from the propaganda of the high speed rail trying to get you to convince that it's a good idea. It's a good idea. So the, that gives you the idea of how much energy that's going to take to go from LA or Anaheim to the Bay Area. Five? You have to have plants. And how long is that drive normally? 
I haven't done it in a long time. I used to, but it's from, about from six LA. hours. Six, six hours going up Highway Five. Okay. And is the is it following I five or is it over? Is the corridor further over? No, it's going. Um, do you know where Hanford is? Yeah. Yeah. So it's going up ninety nine. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's going farther east than you even thought. And yeah. It's going farther east because they need to pick up the population centers of Bakersfield and Fresno. So it's going, okay, so it's going up, okay. And I assume and it goes, it's going to Modesto and Stockton or does it fall over? Yeah, Modesto, you know, Stockton, and then, um, and then over to the... Gilroy, it's going to go up near the San Luis Reservoir. Okay. End up in Gilroy um, and then go up the existing tracks to Caltrain, and then it'll go along the Caltrain tracks into uh, right where Salesforce Center is, where the building is. Uh, there's a whole intermodal uh, okay. center there. Yeah. Where they built that bus. Yeah, where they built the bus, the big And the beam bus. cracked. Yeah. <laughs> so changing the subject. Now, so here's a question for you. If you saw a product that was better, you know, I know, Jason, you're not... 100% back in the, you know, doing production, but for Chris or, and, and, and Eric, and you saw a product that was a lot better. I mean, it does everything, but better, you know, more efficient. How hard would it be for your company to make the jump, to convince the company to make a jump? If you saw that it could cut down your design, it, hypothetical design software out there, sure. would it be really difficult <clears throat> for to convince that company um, say, hey, you know, this is something better than Autodesk, better than Bentley, better than civil site design. I mean, it's just, would it be really difficult? We're or they say, no, about, we already spent too much are we money. talking about the CCL? No, no, LS just have a good <laughs> No, no, just if something was out there, somebody went and spent a billion dollars creating it. It's hard. It's hard because end of the, yeah, ultimately, yeah. end of the day, we got to have the tools that align with our client, with yeah. our client's expectations. Yeah. Right. I mean, I think. So that's one part of it, yeah. right? The other part is just change, yeah. right? I mean, like you and I have been talking, right? I've yeah. been trying to get people to look at your tools. People see it, but then they're like, eh, yeah. does it really save me that much money, save me that much time? But then if I, you know, for us, you know, we look, we put on your, you know, your owner's yeah. hat, you're like, well, yeah. I mean, if I can have you do it quicker yeah. and more efficient and better, yeah. I can actually have you start moving other projects. Yeah. But, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people like to park and bark, you know, like to park on stuff, mm -hmm. right, on just those projects, right? And so, I don't know, it, it's just one of those, I think the scapegoat definitely is contract language. Yeah. Right? We, we know what the industry is wanting us to do. Yeah. Unfortunately, right, I mean, you know, when you work, when you're doing the MEP stuff, the architecture stuff, the structural stuff, the mm -hmm. civil stuff, the survey stuff, there's certain yeah. industry standards in which everybody's using. Um, and when you say client, though, you mean that's what you mean. That's that interoperability between yeah. me and all of the subs and the, yeah. uh, the, the architects. Right. That it's not the developers don't care. No, not the no, no, not no. So, yeah, not so, the, so like text. In, dot, like for instance, yeah. right? I mean, so text dot requires open mm -hmm. roads, Bentley products, right? However, the majority of the community does it in a alternative <laughs> because that's what they're good at, and maybe it's they're good at something else that makes it quicker. Right, kind of like your tools over there. They know, I'm, but I'm just using that. I'm just using yeah, an example, yeah. right? But but we're they're gaming the system, yeah. And then we're just doing save as DGN or <laughs> export as, yeah. And you know, none of that stuff really. I mean, it works in a traditional CAD yeah. microstation platform, but yeah. you can't use any of that stuff yeah. for you know GeoPack or inroads or mm -hmm. you know open roads. I mean, okay, you're having me in CAD file. Where's the ALG file? Yeah. Where's the DTM file so I can make future updates and manipulations and yep. stuff. So I just think, I think really the big barrier really is just contract length with expectations yeah. of the clients. And then of course, trying to get like in the change of the people. Yeah. Now I'm very fortunate that half actually is very, um, out of all the firms I've worked for mm -hmm. and the, throughout my 24 years, um, they're probably the most technology progressive. Mm -hmm. um, they'll, they'll make investments on stuff. Yeah. And, you know, if you show the, if you show the, the ROI, you can kind of make your business case yeah. and you get a beta project and people can test it yeah. and it shows as proof they're they'll jump on it in a heart. Yeah. So it's, it's just, but it's the culture. Yeah. It's the culture. What I mean, I've noticed is who, 
if the cab manager you know, <clears throat> is usually the one making this pitch about, yeah. hey, uh, there's a new software out there. I think it'll save us 30% on design time. It's the same price as Civil 3D and Bentley and other products. Um, and we don't need to upgrade or upgrade our, our, our hardware at all. If you have direct access to the owner, it's much easier. But if you've got to go through five chains of command, yeah. it's going to take you a year to get right. that approval. Or maybe more. And, yeah, or more. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I've noticed is, yeah, the bigger the company, it's Good, so no, hard. Government is the worst. Yeah, government. Yeah. Right? I mean, <laughs> but yeah, the smaller companies that have like three or four offices and you have direct access to the owner, you yeah. only answer to the owner as yeah. a CAD manager or CTO. And that CTO mm -hmm. is tech savvy. I've seen some CTOs that don't even know CAT at all. Any out of this product, I'm like, yeah. how in the world are you the CTO if you don't even know the yeah. product? But anyway, if you have that direct access to that owner and convince them, then yeah, I've seen owner yeah, within a month. <laughs> yeah, but it just makes it hard because yeah. like you know, Jason alluded to it, right? Yeah. Is the interoperability between now the other team members. So like, for instance, like, you know, if we're doing like, yeah, like we know BriskCat, right? It's It, it looks and feels just like yeah. AutoCAD. Yeah. And civil 3D, and it's like a fraction of the price. Yeah. So money, my boss would love that. Yeah. She would love to just go away from Autodesk and their new licensing scheme. And Bentley is, is worse. Yeah. It's like it's like thirty thousand dollars for one license, right? You're <laughs> like, you know. So if you had an alternate an alternative yeah. that did yeah. the same thing that was acceptable by the client, yeah, more than likely people would shift. But yeah, you know that's just a hard thing to do. But like you know, like for instance, like. Just the scenario you said, my boss will, dude. If you saw how much money we pay in licensing, oh, it is, yeah. it's incredible. If we could get that down by a solution that gave us probably the same or more. Yeah. <laughs> for Imagine the big companies the price. that have, you know, yeah. 10, 20, 30,000 employees and licenses of civil 3D, like Acom, Jacobs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they would love it too. But yeah. I mean, ours is at least seven figures for a 1,300 company firm. Yeah where, you know, 60, 60, 70 percent of it is design professionals. Yeah. And so and that's across everything. Right. Yeah. So even Caltran, I mean, I'm not, I mean, I mean yeah, seats of uh, civil 3D y'all have. Uh, this is, uh, 4, <laughs> yeah. So, 4, yeah so they're so the Autodesk is and Bentley. Do. So you got Bentley on top of that, too. Right. Oh, yeah, so Bentley. They, <laughs> so you got both of them. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's where we, and that's what's hard for us, because we got to make a decision like, you know, as a cat professional, like, oh, I want everything on my computer. Well, do you really? Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, because yeah. then it's like, okay, if I give you an extra license of micro station and you don't use it, yeah, that's 10 grand, you know, plus well, the serve the maintenance fee. So you're looking at 10 to fifteen thousand dollars a a year for yeah. this one software. And if you're not using it, you know, let's kind of yeah. be a little bit more um strategic on who gets what. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it looks like it's changing. Yeah. In 10 to 15 years. I think Autodesk and Bentley, unless they change their attitudes, will yeah. um, go to the dustbin. Um, you see a lot of uh, interesting stuff happening in the architecture space. Yeah. And hopefully that'll start going into the um, the infrastructure space. Yeah. Like Trimble bought Quadri. Yeah. Trimble's upping yeah. their game. Um, and with IFC coming out, hopefully for IFC Road in the next year or so, hopefully that'll start providing that interoperability. So we don't care where it's uh, designed at. Yeah. Right. You can use Open Rose or you can use Civil 3D or whatever other product that you want. Yeah. And again, the interchange happens in Quadrant. Wow. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's where Autodesk wants to go. But hopefully Quadri or Trimble beats them, yeah. beats Autodesk, beat, beats Autodesk to it. Yeah. So we can get rid of Autodesk, who doesn't seem to want to be in the programming business. <laughs> No, they're on the making big deposits <laughs> for good business. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Rob, I saw you just joined, man. How's things going? I know you're still traveling a lot, probably. Hey, what's up, fellas? Yeah, yeah just hopped in to see what you guys are up to. Uh, we're just chit chatting a little bit about this and that. So, where are you at right now? I'm at home. We uh, we just had a baby. Uh, she's three weeks old today. Oh, wow. So, congrats. Wow. Thanks. Awesome. You getting any sleep? <laughs> Uh, she gets up like every two or three hours, so, yeah. <laughs> so no no traveling for a couple months just yeah. to stick around to help out with the baby. That's good. That's good. That's good. So I may not be on here too long because I might have to go change <laughs> a diaper or something like that. I remember those days. Lucky my daughter, she actually slept like five, six hours and was, you know, when she was an infant. I was like really lucky. <laughs> so and, it, and she would instantly fall asleep in the car. 
yeah. put it in a car. That's, that's what my son instant. is. Instant. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so that was always good. We got in the road and boom, <clears throat> sleep. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah. So how's things going at your company? Pretty slammed, you know? Um, are you, yeah, uh, very, very busy. Um, you know, we're, we're at 1200 employees right now and we yeah. have two, 250 job openings right now. <laughs> I think we're the same. I yeah. think everybody, everybody, I, maybe people are fighting <laughs> over people right now. It's, it's a good time to be available if you're, you know, you are a good engineer or designer or CAD manager or IT guy, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, you're highly available right now coming out of college and stuff. So, um, but yeah, it's a good time. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been seeing crazy bonuses being thrown out there, crazy pay raises going out there here in Texas. It just blows my mind. You know, when my buddies call me up, he's, yeah, you know, they're offering me an extra $20,000 a year if I jump ship and go work for them. And I just told him like, yeah, it's a great thing. Just think about it. If, if we do land a recession, things slow down. You're the first one on the chopping block. <laughs> so just remember that. <laughs> So yeah. I think uh, unless I guess, you're highly valuable. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's where, that's where it, yeah. it can get kind of, if, right. Cause end of the day, right. Yeah. Th those who make more yeah. do more. Yep. Yeah. Right. So if you're just a one trick pony, yeah. that's only going to take you so far. Right. I, I mean, unfortunately, so I, if y'all remember the 2008 recession, when a lot of people got let go yeah. and man, it was major cuts. I, I think I can say that now because I don't work for this company anymore, but every, there was a lot of people got cut and pay cuts and I got pay raise yeah i got a pay raise <laughs> when everybody in my company was getting pay cuts and you know he told me not to tell nobody but <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, i think that year i got an eight percent i got an eight percent raise yeah uh, but i was doing i was doing the cat oh. stuff cat manager and i was doing lidar and visualization yeah. so i was we started up a whole new group i mean yeah. you almost feel bad because you're like you see your friends suffering yeah and then people getting let go and here you are you know rising through the ranks but End of the day, though, yep. I was, you know, I just was ambitious. Yeah, yeah. And so I made sure I was trying to make myself as much layoff proof as possible, even yep. though nobody can really do that yep. or guarantee it. But, you know, I yeah. was able to weather, at least weather that storm yeah. at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's, speaking about, you know, pay raises and job titles and stuff, you know, there's sometimes when, when I jump ship, you know, one of the companies I left because I peak really couldn't go any higher, couldn't yeah. get no pay raises. Um, when you start getting up to the owner level and stuff, you know, one of the principles and stuff, and then I couldn't get, it couldn't go up. You know, you can't either you stay there or you go to a bigger company. And so there's been times I jumped ship great company, but I had to, I want to continue growing. And yeah. so I jumped ship to go yeah. other companies and stuff. So, um, have y'all done the same thing where you felt like, okay, I've peaked at this company. I can't go any further. I need to ex keep expanding, keep growing. So, yeah, I, I think, I think like, I'll kick this off here real quick with the other guys answer as well. But one is, I think when you're a traditional mm -hmm. in the traditional billable hours type of structure. Yeah. Um, so for any position, engineer, EIT, mm -hmm. technician, CAD manager, the client's only going to pay so much. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. And so you got to fit in that billable, that billable hours type yep. of um, type of range. Um, but, you know, but now I think as I, you know, so they say, right, if you're really trying to optimize, you know, to make more money quicker yeah. early in your career, you have to jump ship every five years. Yeah. Every five years is going to give you a guarantee, almost a guarantee yeah. 15 to 20% raise because I, I don't know why it is, but when I call them homegrown, if you're working through the firm, some somewhat some reason you're just not as seen as the I don't say you're not you're valuable yeah but for some reason you just don't make those strides like a new person coming in yeah or if you're to leave the company yeah so I think that's a that's an interesting dynamic yeah um, but yeah I've, I've had to hit ceilings I mean now you can get creative you know mm -hmm. with you know can I get more PTO time can I get a bigger bonus yeah um, you know because sometimes yep you're, you're going to hit a ceiling yeah, unfortunately, yeah unless yeah. you get into a management type of a management type yeah. of title yeah then that opens up kind of the opens yeah. up opens up the uh the lid to a better opportunity yeah. but if you're just if you're just an hourly an exempt kind of type type person yeah you're unfortunately you're kind of you're bound to yeah bit. anyway that's my experience how about jason do you yeah. i'll i'll give you from a different perspective yeah. from the from the owner perspective if you're not willing to pay someone more than you're making, 
then you have no business being in, in business. Yeah. <laughs> These companies that, oh, you can't make more than, than you know, principal A, B, C, or no. no yeah. yeah, yeah, you can't. A good person that knows what they're doing, you should never be afraid to hire that person and, and get them yeah. working. I, and a, a lot of these organizations, you know, a lot of guys do get pigeonholed and they don't get those raises because those companies, their egos, you know, and it's yeah. like, if that's, if I, I that's my opinion, yeah. I'll probably yeah. be crucified for that. But. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some companies you have uh, profit sharing, you get some of the profit yep. sharing in the new year. Yeah. Uh, you get equity if you're there long enough. Yeah, ESOP, uh, you get ESOP yeah. type stuff too. Yeah, ESOP. So, and uh, it's different every company. Some companies just one owner, and they're not going to be any other owners. There's not going to be yeah, no, yeah. instead of ownership, you're just going to get profit sharing, or you're just going to get bonus <laughs> at the end of the year. Well, and and there's there's I mean, and then and then from that same perspective as an owner, especially the smaller you know smaller businesses, smaller ownership, smaller companies. Yeah, you know. <laughs> There's only so much you can pay. I mean, yeah. if you're a, a 10 person firm and you want the best guy there is, you're either going to pay for him or, you know, sometimes you can't because yeah. you just, you know, um, and, and so there's a lot of factors, but yeah. at, as far as the medium, the larger size companies, if yeah. they're afraid to pay, you know, then it's not a place to be in my opinion, because you are going to get pigeonholed. You, they are going to try to keep you. Yeah back yeah, one firm i was at said that my bonus my overtime was my bonus <clears throat> <laughs> because i was a technician so i got time and a half and we were pissed because it was that doing design build project yep. we were, dude we were grinding 16 hour days for like two years straight yeah i mean all of us were living at hotels yep. go home and then you know again we understood we're like oh man it was the best year the firm's done because we're working on this big project we're killing it and then, seriously, dude, it was like a five hundred dollar bonus. Yeah. And then, it were like, even my boss says she's like, I'm embarrassed. I'm sorry, guys. But you know, and even the head, the regional manager guy was like, Well, see, you guys get the opportunity for overtime pay, and the engineers don't. So, so they didn't have to work as many hours as we did. And they got you know, same we, we're freaking bur we got burnt out from this. Yeah. Anyway, it was just an interesting when you're kind of in that position where your overtime is your, is your bonus. So one company I was at, we, this is before the 2008 recession. So 2006 and 2007, it was crazy. Just like it is kind of right now. And I was probably working 60, 70 hour weeks consistently. Yeah. And then they're like, yeah, once you get to that much overtime, the taxes is knocks you back down to like regular rate. It sucks. Yeah. I mean, it's the taxes is so high. Yeah. You're back to making the regular rate. But anyway, they're like, okay, we see that you've made, you know, $30,000 in overtime, you yeah. know? And they're like, so we're going to promote you, but now your salary, oh, and yeah, then this crazy. is your rate. <laughs> and, yeah. I, and I said, no, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah. so I turned it down. So there was like four senior designers and this is at one of the companies and like only one of them accepted all the rest of us turned it down. Yeah. No, no, thanks. You know? So uh, early in my, early in my career, I was doing senior designer, which, and it actually was CAD management training. I was doing everything. Yeah. And then, and for a large, and yep. you know larger organization but then i was also doing it well yep. i was being paid hourly and so it, it kept creeping up kept creeping up kept creeping up yep. my office manager finally pulled me in he goes all right i'm tired of paying you two salaries we, we got to change this he goes i'm going to make you a change your title make you this put you on salary and bump you to here and i'm like oh and i lost that i mean ever since that i've never yep. worked hourly again so. yeah yeah I did feel sorry for my close friend. He was a young EIT and he was working every weekend with me and you know, yeah. he was making the same rate and stuff, but I'm sure in the year he was getting an engineering bonus yeah, structure set saying, up yeah, but yeah. as an engineer, they get that this company was giving yeah. engineers different types of bonuses compared to the designers and stuff. So, uh, uh, so it was kind of different. So, um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a, a, a a journey, you say, <laughs> in different yeah, companies. Yeah, well, and again, end of the day, I mean, just like Jason, I mean, we all, and I think that's what happens with yeah. CAD managers. I think we get CAD manager types, or I don't say CAD managers, <laughs> just the the go-getters, Yeah, right? We get, we, you say you get rewarded 
for hustling and providing more value. Yeah. But once it's it's a weird dynamic, just like he, just like you said, I said, Jason said, once they get like, why am I paying you twice? Well, I'm doing twice the work. Yep. But so so they then they try to skim me like, you know what, Tony? I'm gonna give you. You're gonna mm-hmm. become a manager now. Yeah. You're gonna be a title manager, and then you know you don't really? get the other perks that came with being just a regular. Yeah. You know, uh, time and a half or. But uh, anyway, it's just weird that they try to do that psychology on you. Yeah. Like Jason says, like, Give yeah, you more unique dude, title. You just, hey, you know what? It's kind of funny, though. Like, and I'm pretty sure, Jason, you were probably happy because you were doing, I mean, not happy, but you were willing to do all these different things because you were being compensated. Yeah. <laughs> and you're kind of making your own way, yeah. doing your own thing, right? It's kind of cool. And then they, you're right. So how did you feel? I'm just curious. In those <laughs> moments, right? I mean, you were okay to put up those extra hours. I mean, for the most part, right? Because you're for the most part. Yeah, I mean. <clears throat> For the most part, I mean, it is, you do lose out on stuff. Of course. It, you know, and luckily at this organization, there was other things that I gained, you know, and, and so part of it is, is that, you know, onward climb. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me at the time, it wasn't as huge right. of, a, of a deal. You know, it did, it was, it was part of the career path, I guess you could mm-hmm. say. Yep. Um, but it's, you still kind of hit you. It's kind of like, God, because <clears throat> to be truthful, I still was doing the same stuff at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah <laughs> so, of course. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because there's, you know, again, anybody kind of back to which quite a few things you've mentioned over the last bit, you know, the, I don't care what anybody says, hard work does pay off yeah. in yeah. some form. And, yeah. and people that say that's not true, they, they're, they're not hard workers. <laughs> I'm not going to go that far. I'm not going to say that. But, I'll say it. It's you true. know, it's, there's, there, there's, there's something to be said for that hard work, yeah. you know, whether it be, you know, things you get to do. I mean, and, and some of it's not tangible. I mean, yeah. being able to come and go as you please, being able to work when you want, being able to call, you know, send a text and be like, hey, uh, I, I, I got to bail for the next two days you know, okay, no problem, you know, and, yeah. you know, and, and knowing that you've worked, you know, 50 hours already on a Wednesday, and they're yeah, like, exactly. okay, take the time, and, you know, g- take it, that's fine, and not having to worry about using up PTO or something like that. I mean, there's, there are some untan- intangible things yeah. that a good organization is going to see, good leaders, you, you know, you talk about that all the time, Eric, the, the good leadership, and there's, yeah. there's something to be said for that, and, you know, Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's, um, I think I had, a, I had a situation once where I was doing that double hustling <clears throat> and, um, by, and again, I was salary. They, you're doing this whole new department. You're going to lead, you know, I was pretty cool. Cause I got to, I was selling LIDAR. I was a CAD manager, you know, new technology guy. I was selling mm-hmm. LIDAR. I was flying all over the place trying mm-hmm. to get clients, stuff like that. Yeah. But, uh, and so I was salary, right. I'm losing out on all this. I'm, I, I'm working, dude, like I'm yeah. still working projects, hustling this, that, and, my boss was really cool though at that time. He was the project manager. He was the head of IT for the, the West. Yeah. But he said, listen, you can't, his way was like, I can't, listen, I know you don't get paid overtime. <clears throat> Just catalog all your hours mm-hmm. and then let me know every week, every time you do that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so I had to spread for a whole year and a half. I didn't use any PTO. I had comp time. <laughs> and so at least I got, at least yeah. I got something. <clears throat> right at least i got to at least it was something and yeah. at least for him he he felt bad again we were in the the corporate sandbox that we had to deal with yeah and so but so at least that was kind of a little bit of a a little bit of something because i got a comp it yeah. and then so for you know i could take some time off i never took yeah. my pto and you know by the time you know tears goes by you have a lot of bank time yeah pto time when you have a lot of comp time i was always work. in the red so but since i worked so much i was using a lot of my like I would go way over my vacation time <clears throat> because I was traveling to go see my daughter all the time. So every time I went, it was 10, like eight days oh, okay. and eight days. So I only had 10 vacation days a year when I first <laughs> yeah. started got out of the military, but if I'm spending 30 days a month, uh, a year yeah. on vacation, just to go see my daughter. And my boss was Kate because Hey, yeah, you're putting in 70 hour weeks and stuff. Yeah. So we'll take those hours and you can use them as vacation or something. So, but yeah, uh, let's talk about training real quick. You know, um, some of the companies I've been talking to, it's kind of unique, uh, interesting. Now, some clients are totally moving away from in-person or even brown bag training. They're like, no, nah, we only want to go like video. 
like people, our clients, yeah. our, our instructors. What do you think about it where engineering companies don't want to do, you know, in person or just brown back? They're just like, hey, we've created the e-learning platform. Let them watch videos. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm dealing with that yeah. now. So one, yeah. I think if somebody is not um, willing to invest in the people, that's mm. a problem. That's a bad sign. Yeah. Right. Um, and you, and the scapegoat is easy having a portal. Yeah. Like, you can only do so much. Again, we have it. Yeah, we have an e-learning platform. It's great. It's a great way for like onboarding. Like, hey, here's a couple of videos to kind mm. of help people <clears throat> let you get settled in. But again, like where I'm at, I mean, they've invested in people. Mm. Like we have a talent. You know, she's the head of head of training. She's the director of of um, I think people talent or director of talent. <laughs> <laughs> I forget the, the name talent. of it. Yeah, but, but literally, she's there to just making core, they're doing leadership training yeah de we're de actually developing internal yeah and then they also they also encourage um internal you know individual practices yeah. um, um brown bags yeah and so this is the first company that just really okay so again work at different firms yeah when, when people say like we care about our people half associates cares about their people yeah <clears throat> and so and that's the reason why as part of the reason why i made this move from yeah. oregon here yeah um, you know, I'm grateful to actually follow through with what they said in the interview, <laughs> but that was the vibe that I got from everybody. So yeah. I mean, I'm in a pretty unique situation, but <clears throat> anyway, I just think it's, again, part of the on-learn platforms do great. I call them for the clicks and picks, yeah. but there's so much internal tribal knowledge, yeah. quirky stuff, like, you know, um, to do things that to learn from a peer to peer yeah. or by somebody inside the firm. I think goes a long ways of separating that firm and those groups yeah. from just the regular folks who are just focusing on clicks yeah. and picks. Because a lot anyway, of the, that's the videos you, you you see from e-learning companies that I used to create a lot of those contents <clears throat> for different companies, and it's just explaining what that button does. You know, sometimes yeah. they say, hey, this is how you create an alignment, but it doesn't really go in depth in yeah. why you're doing it this way. Yeah. You know, why are you creating this alignment based on engineering best practices and yeah. stuff? They don't even talk about engineering basically at all. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they even get talk about engineering on these these tools yeah. like, hey, this is how you create an alignment. Yeah. But that's it. They don't tell you like, hey, this is what you got to look for when you're creating this alignment based on engineering standards, you know. And that's why I get a lot of clients because my engineering background, you know, just, hey, mm -hmm. you know engineering, you've done the trenching, you've done platting, you've done surveying. Yeah. And most of my clients are getting away from video training. They're actually, they hack some, they're getting away from it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what's interesting. Yeah. Clients are coming to me or getting away from video training and coming more in-person, yeah. online, live yeah. training where the guys can ask me questions yeah. and stuff. So, but, but I think that's where the, that's where the, the training comes because yeah. you know, you've created, some, I've created a couple of things, right? That's in the market, in, in marketplaces. Yeah. But, it, and I think that's what makes advantages like to like, you know, like Chris, Jason, us, you know, you know, Robin, he was on. You know, I think if you can do it and put in your experience yeah. of, okay, this is how we're going to do an alignment today. But let me tell you this thing yeah. that's kind of quirky because, yeah. you know, I've done so many blah, 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 blah. And people can make it, can make it now relatable. Yeah. Now, if you, the platform, the on-demand stuff that we have, it's really great to, yeah. again, because sometimes when you get into your a class like yours, yeah. it's almost better. It'd be a better experience if the mm. clicks and picks is already taken care of. Yeah. Right, you can, well, you, can, you can go further in that training. Yeah, <clears throat> there's an overall thing you have to look at, and you have to look at. It's not just about training. It's you got to look at how different people react to different training. Oh, you've right. got to look at what what you need to train. I mean, there's a whole different idea of yep. the the picks and the clicks. I want them to go to a a LinkedIn training site or something yeah. to learn learn the interface, learn the picks and clicks. Right. But then there's your workflows, your processes. Mm, Why do we do the things we do yeah. to, to, to make our plans look the way they do? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that you can't, that's hard to teach in a canned, yeah. you know, training yeah. environment, unless you have someone in your organization that that's all they do, yeah. you know? And even then you don't get to ask the questions. You don't get to, like you said, Eric, well, here, this is why we're doing it this way. Why didn't my alignment work when I created it? You know, yeah. like, why didn't it convert to alignment when I clicked on a polyline yeah. or something, yeah, you, know, yeah. you know, problem solving, you know, so. Too, uh, what I've seen is too many organizations want to, they want to, they want a single answer. They want to, oh, I'm going to hire X to do this, or I'm going to buy X solution and do yeah. this. That, that isn't, you can't approach training yeah. that way. And 
you, you have to do, you know, you need to do the quick lunch and learns every now yeah. and then about yeah. specific, one single specific topic. You know, this is, we've been seeing this on our plans coming yeah. back from the city for the past two months. All right, yeah. let's address keep it. Getting red lines on this. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, and so the companies that are starting to, I mean, a lot of companies don't understand that. The, yeah. the leaders don't understand that. The people that are making the decisions don't understand that. And uh, it's frustrating. No, I, I know. <laughs> well, but, then, but, then the, but then the flip side of that, too, because we're going through this with ORD, right? We're trying to get ORD training. So we have access to all the Bentley stuff online, right? So people can go. In. It's really good, at least, to get them familiar with the yeah. interface, the buttons. But the they button. have to do it. That's and it. that's the part that knowing what the people, I mean, I remember, I remember guys literally putting them in a room, telling them, this is what you need to do, doing overviews, giving them a manual and going, you need to understand this, yeah. A, B, and C. Well, are you paying me to do that? Uh, no, master, go <laughs> home, read, read it. It's part of your job. Yeah. If you don't have leadership that is going to put their foot yeah. in place yeah. and say, you've got to do this yeah. or some, you know, I mean, incentivize it somehow or. That's you know, their job though, right? right? I mean, that's, that's, that's well, what's funny is companies not to create school mentality. I mean, yeah, but that's, so. that's one of my cat truths, right? When I, on podcasts, I talk about my cat truths. So one of it yeah. is know your resources. Yeah. Right. So if I'm a technician designer, it is my job to know the software and my job to know my client standards. Yeah. Right? Yes. But, but someone like us, Four on this, Rob, others, all of us can name, you know, a handful of other guys. Those guys never had to be told that. We automatically went hey, and learned it, moved ourselves. But yeah. that's not, you know, and, and just saying, do your flipping job. We can't do that anymore, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but so you've got to have, find a way to incentivize it somehow, yeah. or it has to come from above in a manner that, works for right. you know and so that's that's the part i mean if you've got someone with with tony's mentality yeah. i don't need to worry about training that guy in the same way i've got to go right. the, the time i have to spend mm -hmm. with yeah. the all these others i know i can say i need you to figure out a b c d e and he's going to go do it yeah. you know whereas the other 10 people i'm going to have to handhold some of them some of them are not going to be able to do videos. They're going to be like, oh, I don't understand. You know, they need someone there to hold their hand. There's going to be a couple out of it that are, mm -hmm. are able to get the gist and get yep. the stuff. And, you know, and then you're going to have some that are, you know, they do pretty good and they'll go a certain to a certain stage on their own. But then they're like, mm -hmm, you know, what do I do? So that all, that's what I'm saying. So an organization that takes all that into account yeah. and has the different pieces, to me, that's where you see, and I know a few organizations, very yeah. few. Yeah, know, one of the companies, we well, broke them up into groups, power users. I trained brown bag with them, just power users and the intermediate and the beginners. Yeah. And then because some of the beginners didn't feel comfortable sitting there trying to do training with power users and all that stuff. Yeah. They look, you know, like, hey, I'm behind. And they didn't feel like that. Egos. So, so I'm like, okay, we'll do the beginners. So they all feel comfortable. They're all equal in yeah. the room. You know, I think oh. Eric and I talked about it. Train yeah. up. You yeah. start at the lowest and you keep going up. And as you get to yeah. these other people, you bring them in and yeah. then you keep going, you know, so that train up mentality, that's a, I mean, that's a big deal. And, and also when I look, just talking about this and we, this is because we're having the discussion right now at my, at my work. We've had several meetings, but I also said, you know, this is some people don't agree with this, but the way I manage my group, I don't do it this. So I do it the parenting method way, right? If I'm going to get the best from each, like, like my kids, right? If I'm going to get the best of them, they all, they all learn different. They mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. do things different. They hear different. They see different. And so, you know, in order to maximize that, of course, our morals, mm -hmm. our foundational stuff is all the same, right? Yeah. Kind of like so in work situation. All of our standards are the same, our yeah. workflows, but how to get the best out of different people, yeah. I have to I have to get to know my people. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. So I you know, so Tony, like for instance, I don't yeah. my work, you know, one of my places, I you know, trying to be better, I read books and other things in leadership. But one was one lady just liked to have stuff silver plattered, a little bit more instruction. And she also liked me to come by her desk every day, 
how are you doing today? Okay, mm-hmm. great. Anything I can help you with? Yeah. You know, and I know we're kind of pandering, but that's that made her feel her best. Yeah. You know, then on the opposite side, you know, then you have a couple of guys where you have to wrangle them in because I call them the Tanzanian doubles. <laughs> they just work, 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 work. When the dust all settles, you're not sure what's going to happen. <laughs> so you got to manage those guys. And then, of course, you have people like probably like us on this on this thing now where you can give them a simple ju- instruction direction and they're just going to go do it. Right. And yeah. some people they need a little more hand holding. Right. So, but I know that's, a, I know that's kind of over the top, but that's how I've been able to really relate with my folks yeah. and be able to get penetrate that, the, those walls yeah. and to be able to, you know, um, be able to make really good connections and figure out how to manage them the best way that I can. It's not like, you know, old school grandpa, saying my way or the highway my built out that, yeah <laughs> you know or whatever you know what i'm saying i mean that's you know but i think <laughs> get out you know, you, yeah i've seen that too but uh you know but you know it's just you got to finesse it and kind of understand it yep. and like jason was alluding to i think and that's what i'm really trying to help i mean our firm does a really good job already but really it's really stepping mm-hmm. out and it's like unfortunately in order to make this experience the best yep. we really have to kind of consider all that level, that training up thing. And how do we do that? Because we're all different. We all mm-hmm. learn different and we have to yep. find the mediums to really get us to where we need to get to. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, I, I have are different. I, some of them, I have to build handouts, step-by-step mm-hmm. handouts. You know, that's how they learn. Some of them are visual. Hey, can you create me a video? Some of them repetition. Hey, we need to do training every two weeks over the same topic. Yeah. <laughs> you know, let's talk about, you know, hydraulics and, and storm, you know, and next week, Let's talk about it again and then yeah. one more time, you know, repetition, repetition, you know. So, yeah, you got to get to know your client, your your users, your your coworkers and stuff that you're teaching. So, Jason, um, yes. yeah. Oh, no, I just was going to say there's there's. Um, I mean, I got to the point where I wanted to focus more on our way, the yeah. organization's way. I want to focus on, you know, what are things that are going to. What are risks? Let's mm-hmm. train out the risks. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. make sure you're doing grading properly. Make sure, you know, curb inlets are showing properly, you know, and yeah. not up here or down. That that kind of stuff where yeah. it's not those basics, you know, that that's where you want some of them to kind of take the own initiative, get the picks and clicks. And and you know, the the in-house stuff. Um I had some good experience you know bringing in third party to do the basic training the all of that core kind of Mm -hmm. stuff if you will and then let's the internal team let's focus on the the company the organization you know the standards i hate using that word but the workflows the processes (laughs) this is why we do what we do i mean uh, you know, I think Eric and you, you and I have had this conversation, but the, the, you know, Tony, the things that, why do we do it? Well, you know, all of us can, here on this call right now can probably think of items. We'll go do this particular process this way, because if you try to do it the way the book says, it's not going to work, you right. know, or... <laughs> Or if, well, if, if, way not Crystal, Autodesk, if not, yeah, Crystal, just make a script work. and go around it anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> go around it. <laughs> I'll just make it his way. Instead of spending three hours doing it, I'm going to do it in 20 minutes the way it should have been done. Wait, 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 one button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. That's funny. Um, uh, Chris, you want to say something? Look like you wanted to say something. <laughs> no, but I have automated some of the stuff that we've done in some of the classes. Yeah. Kind of like, why are we doing this when it could just be one button? <laughs> it could be just, one, just button. that one button. Uh, man, you gotta have, you, you gotta, you must be, what? you must be like those guys, like in the Muppets, those guys that hang up in the balcony, and right? just, ah! that make a joke. I can see <laughs> why are you, do, why are you doing that? You dummies! <laughs> I can make a script and do that at one button. <laughs> what is your guys' yeah. thought? I'm gonna. But, that, but, that's, but, but, but be honest, that's like the future. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think you have to be able to know your business enough to where. You know, you can have that mentality and then you you bring in somebody like a so, Chris to create it. Now, the flip side of that, though, is you automate too much, then nobody knows. how. Well, to that's what I was going to say. What is your guys' thought right on right that? I, I know organizations, some fairly big ones right now that are 
really, really, they have awesome standards, awesome processes, awesome workflows, and they spend a ton of time training new hires exactly how to do their process. Everything is so highly customized. If those people leave, it's kind of like a, it's a double-edged sword in, in favor of the organization because people don't want to leave because they don't know how to do it if they don't have all this customization. Do oh, you guys yeah, believe yeah, in yeah, that that's... or not? Yeah, so much scripts, third-party apps on top of that. And then, you know, just- <laughs> Well, just so the amount of customization. On. There is no, yeah. I don't want to say there's no thought because there's still a thought process yeah. that has to go into it, but they're not having to learn how to do any of that behind the scenes because they have a button to do it. Well, I'm all for, but what does that say for- <laughs> industry and for these people that are coming up if that's the only way they've learned how to do it they can't go anywhere else mm. yeah so what do you think uh, my last question you know before we get off here companies that kind of create silos you know there are big companies where you're the young engineer you get thrown to the transportation department or the h and department <clears throat> and that's where you're going to be for decades <laughs> you know do you see positives in that or just negatives? Uh, you know, I'm like, wow, I would be, hate to be like stuck in the transportation department. I'm just doing profiling and that's it. <laughs> so, okay, let me kick this off. For, so I think yeah. from a CAD technician standpoint, yeah. I think to be um, cross-trained yeah. is very crucial, Yeah. right? I think to me, because I've had CAD teams where the ones that I've been able to cross-train across disciplines, yeah. now everybody has their core that they're really good with, yeah. but I've been able to retain people and mm. avoid layoffs. Yeah. Right. So CAD, because CAD is, I mean, I just, it makes me excited because it's one of those skill sets across, crosses over lots of industries, lots of practices. Yeah. I mean, you can do movies, you can do animations, you can do gaming, you can do survey, mm. you know, engineering, you know, houses. I mean, you can do all sorts of cool stuff, yeah. right? And yeah. so, but, but for those who do that, I think those are the ones that progress and become yeah. the power users. Now, I think when it comes to engineering, I think that's, this is my opinion. I think it's a little bit different once you're on a professional track to yeah. become a licensed engineer. Yeah. I think, unfortunately, I think you have to, the ones, it's, yeah. it just seems like for the most part, somebody, they specialize in one main thing that they end up being yeah. the engineering stand for. Doesn't mean that they don't cross train and know enough yeah. about something to be dangerous, right? But I just think a lot of, I, to me, it seems like mm -hmm. a lot of folks yeah. specialize that they're engineers, yeah. professional engineers, not saying that's the right or wrong, yeah. but I just, I see that more, I, but I think cross training, no matter where you're at, yeah, I think you could become more powerful if you can cross train, because especially when you get that team leader, yeah. now you can team lead and manage multiple groups because you understand how they do yeah. the work. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, um, a good example, I mean, one time we were trying to hire an EIT and a senior designer and they were coming from like, I think it was AECOM and yeah, I got... 15 years in transportation department. Like, all right, and you want how much money? And you come from Acon. We're 40 person employee. So he, he asked a ridiculous amount. Like, yeah. look, we're not Acon. We can't match that pay. And he goes, you know, but let me go ahead and tell you something. You only know how to do pro profiles. Can you do grading? Can you do drainage? Can you do utility? No, I've never even done it. Never attempted. Like, yeah. okay, your value just went down because the guys out here that have three years experience can do all three of those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you have 15, you know? Yeah. Um, so... Same thing for engineers. So our engineers were in the small companies I worked at. They did it all. They were the traffic guy. They were the jolly guy. They were everything. Yeah. And I bet they're super valuable when they go to a bigger company yeah, and they have all that value. Yeah, correct, correct. I tell you, I totally uh, think that, you know, well, they should cross train to different departments. Yeah. But I can't imagine if you're somewhere for 20 years, you get laid off. Let's say you get laid off or the economy goes down and then you try to apply and they all, only no traffic, you know, and there's no traffic positions open. There's yeah. the engineer position, but they're like, well, all you know is traffic. <laughs> yeah, but that's kind of the, I think Jason had wanted has some thoughts to I think he has some thoughts. It again, it's a size, it's a it's a size issue. I yeah. mean a, a, a 50, you know, small and, and mid-sized organizations, it's it's completely different than a, a you know a fifteen hundred person firm where you know we have a traffic division, we have this division, yeah. we have an a, you know water division they're mm -hmm. doing these you know the when you're you know when you're that hundred person firm those engineers you know to maintain your business you have to be able to do yeah. 
different thing. Yeah, but even for a bigger company, imagine if you're you need 250 people and you had all these silos, you could easily transfer a couple of engineers around. But now you can't because that guy is just strictly traffic guy. Yeah, and yeah, but that that's... guy's slow, and this H and H department is kind of uh, high, no. and we need more people. You can't move that engineer over there to help you out. That's nope. that's why I, I think it's negative. <laughs> oh, I, I I think it is negative. I think they should know how to do things. I mean, I I work with engineers now who've never done a a county road or a or a subdivision of any kind. Yeah, they just know how to do a water line, you know, yeah. or they just know how to do a sewer line. Yeah. And it's like, well, if, if that work's not available and you need to be able to do yeah. small subdivisions or county roads out in the middle of nowhere. The team needs, how, to, needs your help. <laughs> yeah, you know, so and I, I do believe that engineers just let you know. No, but, that, but that's no, no, like no. Cat folks as well. I'm like, listen, yeah. okay, you may not like MicroStation, but when you're about to get laid off, MicroStation is looking really good right now. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I, I always say, as long, if I have a gun to my head, I can use MicroStation just fine. Well, somebody <laughs> knows both of them. You're super valuable. Well, see, cause, cause that's oh, what, yeah. That's that's, that's what I, I think my meal ticket was throughout the years. You know, I'm not a typical CAD guy because I've literally MicroStation, AutoCAD, 3 Studio Max, Navisworks, yeah. Infoworks. I mean, all these different programs, mm -hmm. but yeah. it was me trying to making sure, you know, again, lay, as layoff proof as I can, yep. but it's really about bringing more value. And I had an itch yep. to scratch. I yep. had to do all these new things and yep. all these things. And like, and like Jason alluded to, right. I mean, for the ones who want to do it, we'll do it. And for the ones that don't, don't, but then they're going to be very limited yep. in what their progression is and that ceiling that they're going to hit. Unfortunately, you're a one trick pony. So your, your advancements, again, you're going to hit a ceiling mm -hmm. unless you want to do something different. Yep. which we'll, we'll give you the opportunities, yeah. but I think a lot of people, and I, I'm not, I'm all for specialists, mm -hmm. but I think in order, if you're a go-getter, again, you want to create a little bit more of an opportunity. Yeah. I think you have to seek out your, yeah. whatever, whatever lane you're in and kind of dabble in some I, other things if you can. Yeah. I, I always tell people, young engineers, even designers, don't get complacent, yeah. you know, keep pushing yourself. I got complacent I first, when I got out of the military those first four years. I was just being a simple plat guy, survey guy, I'm not survey, um, civil tech. I wasn't trying to learn anything. It wasn't until Civil 3D came out in 2005. Then I got like, okay, I really need to expand my worth and, you know, uh, my knowledge. And then I started getting involved with, you know, reading a bunch of blogs and stuff like that. When Civil 3D came out, YouTube wasn't even out yet. Yeah. <laughs> so well, nobody uh, wanted to use LDD anyway. So, so we were using Land Desktop at the time. Yeah, so nobody else would use that one. We had Land Desktop and then we had, uh, um, what was the other one? Terrain Modeler. Was that the other one that was around? So, um, and, but yeah, that's. I, everything changed. I think when Civil 3D came out, I was like, "Look, I got to be more valuable than just what I know in from the military." Yeah, which is fine. I mean, I got decent training in military, you know. You know, but uh, yeah, it's. I, I just tell people, "Got you got to. You can't be complacent." <laughs> yeah, where yeah. Well, fair enough. Yeah, um, you know, keep. So, keep. so you guys were talking about customization. Yeah. Uh, National Highways in England, who run like all the highways in England, um, they've created a product they're calling a uh, Rapid Engineering Modeling. REM, yeah. um, and they have like customization of the wazoo. So they'll do your whole preliminary design and they're using their highway design standards um, to build that preliminary model. Wow. And then you're able to export it out to uh, in uh, open roads or civil 3D um, as wow. a starting point. So, but they're spending like $3 million a year just maintaining it, plus their initial startup costs, which were like huge. Yeah. So if you do want to go that automation route, it is possible. Yeah. And they aren't even, they're using Rhino as their engine to display oh. everything. So they're using Rhino script and um, Grasshopper to create all their workflows. I'm calling yeah. it workflows, not programming. And so you can get your preliminary design really quickly. Hmm. I mean, I think there's something to automation. I know we're around time. Automation where like, if you can like, like, just like you said, if I could get myself a preliminary design, yeah, I'm still charging my client, you know, a hundred percent, but I found efficient ways to at least get my design design advanced. Yeah. And it's actually a pretty decent design. Yeah. I mean, that's some smart business on that side as well. I mean, yeah. I don't, I, I think by the 25 years, I think engineering companies will be smaller. Yeah. There's going to be so much automation. I don't, I don't, I think they're going to be much smaller to me, my personal yeah. opinion. I don't think they're going to be bigger, you know, That'd be interesting because there's just so much automation going. You won't be seeing 
projects lasting a year, <laughs> two years. <laughs> so, um, well, well don't just, tell anyone I said this, but I don't tell anyone. No, I love the, I, I'm not going to lie. I like the Florida DOT. They're all their automation tools and stuff. I yep. mean, yeah, it, their stuff works and they've put a lot of time into it. And, you know, it's very specific to Florida. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's great, you know, if, if we had more of that. Um, theirs is modular, which is nice, you know, yeah. being able to pick what you want to use. But Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys. Someone's uh, just got to go in and do all this, the setup for that, if they yeah. do want to use it. Correct. Yeah. Because Florida will give it to anyone who wants. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, so you have Texas projects with Florida's workspace. <laughs> <laughs> But they have a cool tool that'll go through and do your CAD scan. Correct. Yeah, we go through and make sure all your levels are correct, all the correct blocks are being used. Yeah, yeah, that's. Do you know those guys, Chris? Have you talked? Have you ever talked with the guys? Yeah. That, uh, what's his name? R Richards is one of the guys. No, I can't yeah. remember. I run into them every once in a while. Yeah, they're um, they're really good guys, and they're always willing to talk and share what they're doing, and which is nice. So. Yeah. Uh, my problem is Caltrans is in doesn't have has an attitude that we aren't a software company <laughs> so whenever i try to say hey let's do this it's always like well we aren't a software company we really don't want to do that. <laughs> that's funny that's funny that's cool well yeah. good seeing you guys i guess yeah yeah i appreciate yeah. coming on uh, we recorded this and then we'll upload it on the youtube channel uh, thanks for coming on uh, i think we had a good time you know yeah. so next time i'll have some some jack or some vodka <laughs> So um, and then um, we'll tr I'll try to do this once a once a month. Get back to doing it once a month. So um, for the people that stay up after work hours, yeah. <laughs> most people are running around with their kids and stuff like that. So I understand. So um, yeah, but uh, well, cool guys. Thanks for coming on. Um, definitely come. You know, jump on our uh, our user group platform. Um, you know, come in and chat, share some ideas, networking. Um, cool things of what's happening in AC if you want to post something. So, um, you know, like, like I said, I'm on there every day, you know, posting and networking and some people just go in there and chat with me in private. So, uh, so a lot of people don't see that, you know, probably yeah. more private discussions than anything else. <laughs> so, um, but cool. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Have a good night. Thanks for All right, guys. See you later. All right, later. Bye.